the Mercedes R-Class is a spacious, practical and comfortable family car. It has unusual design, to say at least, and it shares some of the components, engines and more or less also the reliability with the M-Class from that time. You can choose a standard or a long wheelbase version. If you want more trunk space and if you want to use the third row seats more often, then it's better to choose the long wheelbase model. There are no issues with the interior, it has plenty of storage areas, comfortable seats even in the back and you can find mostly well-equipped cars with plenty of features. Plus, the interior is usually not worn even in cars with 400,000 km or more. Only the navigation system is that older unit, so you can't expect a fancy, up-to-date touchscreen multimedia system. With the proper maintenance, this Mercedes can reach 300,000 or 400,000 km, but generally speaking, it really is better to avoid the early production cars. Mainly because the models made to 2007 or early 2008 do have more often various, usually minor, electronic and some other issues. For example, the tail lights can stop working even if the bulbs are fine. In this case, the issue is usually with the tail light wiring harness. Then the rear electronic tailgate can cause some issues. It's either not working at all or it just can't open or close properly. Sometimes the latch is faulty, sometimes the hydraulic lifter pump, and sometimes the issue is in the control module or in the wiring harness. Interestingly, occasionally even the dealer can't diagnose what exactly is wrong with it. On the other side, there can be a more serious problem with the front differential and with the transfer case as well, again, mostly in cars made to early 2008. But some say that it affects the newer cars as well, although not that often as the older models. The front differential and the transfer case can fail simply because of worn bearings. The good thing is that you can change only these faulty bearings, so it's not necessary to buy the complete part, although you still have to disassemble the front differential and the transfer case to change these bearings. The usual symptoms of this issue are strange whining, growling, howling or grinding noises from the front while driving. You can hear these strange sounds usually while letting off the gas or coasting. Because of these possible problems, I would simply not recommend buying an early car. Of course, it can be good, it can work well for a long time, mainly if most of these things were already fixed, but there still is a bigger chance that it will have some kind of a design flaw. It's very important to check for water leaks in the interior, mainly under the passenger seat, since the battery and some of the control modules are located in this area. The water can easily leak in there through the cabin air filter, which is located under the windscreen on the passenger side. There is a plastic air inlet, which fills up with water, if the water drains under this inlet are clogged, of course. And the water simply leak through these air filters into the interior, to the battery, and you can say hello to the various electronic gremlins. But you can, of course, easily remove this air inlet, so occasionally just check and clean this area. It's also good to check the trunk, especially the spare tire area for water, since the tail lamp seals can fail and let the water inside. There are cars with standard suspension, with the air suspension only on the rear axle, and cars with the optional aromatic adaptive air suspension in all four corners. Obviously, if you want a reliable solution, then try to find the car with the regular suspension, because the air suspension is, in this case, not the most reliable. But it's comfortable. The lifetime of the genuine Mercedes Air Springs is not the best, so be prepared to change them if they start to leak. From the petrol engines, the most reliable is the older 5 liter V8 with the M113 engine code, which was available only in the early production cars. The other engines are not that bad either, 
but there are two main possible problems which can occur on these newer units. The first is the well-known balance shaft sprocket failure, which can occur mainly in cars made to 2007, but also on some of the early 2008 models. Because of this, the timing chain can fail, so resolving this issue can be really expensive. All in all, it's simply better to avoid cars made to mid-2008, unless the previous owner replaced the sprocket and the timing chain. The next possible problem is related to the intake manifold. Basically, a plastic arm on the outside can break, or sometimes the plastic flaps inside the intake manifold can break as well, causing misfires, loss of power and eventually an illuminated check engine light. You can fix the broken outside plastic arm by removing and cleaning the intake manifold and replacing only the broken arm with an improved metallic one. Or you can just buy a new complete intake manifold, which is in a lot of cases a better and faster solution, since after replacing the outside arm only, the inside plastic flaps can still break. All the engines are equipped with the timing chain, which can be worn after 250,000 or 300,000 kilometers, so I would be prepared to change it after this mileage point. This Mercedes can be equipped with the 7-speed automatic gearbox only. Definitely check it properly before buying and change the oil in it, because there are numerous cases when the conductor plate failed. But there is no need to replace the whole transmission, because the conductor plate itself can be repaired for a reasonable price. It's also good to check the power steering fluid level. You can access the power steering fluid reservoir by removing the plastic engine cover. Most of the time, only the reservoir gasket is leaking, but it's good to change the whole reservoir as well, because it has a filter in it, and of course, in this case, it's good to change the power steering fluid too. And keep in mind that the lack of power steering fluid can easily destroy the power steering pump, which is expensive. To summarize things up, it's better to buy a properly maintained car made in late 2008, or better, made from 2009, buy only a car with maintenance history, find a good independent specialist, change all the fluids in time, and keep at least 3000 euros for the possible repairs. As usual, check the car properly before buying, and if you have personal experience with this car or more information about it, then you can write it into comments. Thanks for watching!